Hi, Archie Hacks fam. If you don't know me already, my name is Tommy, and I'm the junior editor and writer for Archie Hacks. And today we're switching things up a little bit, just because we've kind of heard what you've been saying that you want us to have a podcast. Though we're still trying to figure things out, we're starting this little series to maybe introduce this kind of dialogue, this kind of content, a little further for you guys. So. Today, I will just be reading one of my articles I've kind of written up. So, if you don't have the time to read those articles yourself, play this video in the background, listen to what I'm saying, my voice, and maybe have some opinions or thoughts that you could let us know in the comments. Or, you know, maybe you like us and you want to share, or you think what we're saying is great for incoming design students who don't know too much about architecture, or maybe are still in the early years of architecture that you want to share them with. So. article I will be reading to you today is Argument for Hand Drawing, which is one of the older articles that we've written on Archihacks, but it has been a little refurbished, little treats on top of the Sunday type of thing, and Archihizer just shared a new version of that article on their website, and we will be attaching the link below just for you to come go across there because there is something on there that I will mention in the end that you definitely want to go see for yourself. So the Argument for Hand Drawing and three reasons why hand drawing is still an essential skill for architects. It's an amazing to think about how the urge to illustrate ideas, culture, and life on any canvas has spanned humankind in time. The earliest known drawing by humans dates back around 70,000 years ago in a cave known as Blombos, predating the earliest modern human abstract drawings from Europe 30,000 years ago. I'm certainly not a scientist or an anthropologist with an in-depth knowledge on this type of field research, but from a designer's perspective, I can say that drawings are powerful visual storytellers at their best communicate a wide range of qualities about a building, space, culture, or life. When it comes to designing, hand drawings and illustrations are nothing new. Like, it's been here as way before the profession started. But, you know, with today's increasing demands for sophisticated realistic renderings, it's important to remember the root of architectural communication, hand drawing. Why, you say? Computers and tablets have many capabilities that advance how architecture is built and represented, but there are still scenarios where a digital drawing does not compare to a classic hand drawing, or just the speed at which you could test out certain things. You know, although the list can be more extensive, I've come up with three reasons that the drawing is still an essential skill of architects. First reason. Capturing the design process. Design, point A to point B, will never be a straight line. Design is a non-linear progression full of ups and downs, mental blocks, frustration. So it's not surprising that our brain won't remember all the details. However, hand drawings and sketches are frozen thoughts captured in time. Showing a progression from brainstorm to concept, development, and then detailed design. This is an important reason why the skill is still relevant today. For example, have you ever been in a scenario where previous concepts may have been more pumped in the morning in front of you? I have. And it's super frustrating to experience this and even more so if there's no work to provide you a way to start that idea back up. I remember in one of the years, I went all the way to final production, renderings, final models, everything. Maybe not final, but like maybe midway. And I spent a lot of time with that kind of idea. But then when I got to mid mid-year review, I was like, oh, this isn't working. And I ended up trusting my professor and she said like, oh, this design was kind of a more, a little stronger. You might want to explore that. I trashed everything on that design. Luckily I had stuff to go back on, but can you imagine if I didn't? I'd have to basically start from like, not point zero, maybe a couple steps before that, but like, you know what I mean? It, it is really frustrating. You don't have anything to start off with. But well, like the beauty and the excitement of sketches transform the mundane moments in our day-to-day -day lives that could bring forth inspiration and allow us to capture that with any media on any surface. Pen on paper, chalk on the wall, even with coffee and a napkin. If you didn't know already, some of the most incredible pieces of architecture was actually drawn on a napkin. They are called napkin sketches, so these pieces of architecture we kind of look to to study at times by well-known designers and it started with a simple sketch. They found inspiration. And they're like, oh, I need to capture this. That could be you one day. And it's a really unique skill to determine what qualities for you need in order to create a strong architectural concept. But if you are curious about how to improve your sketching, you are in luck. In the past, we wrote four ways to improve your sketching 
for that exact reason. These are just four exercises or tips that I believe can help you improve your sketching. So head on over there to learn more. Definitely going to provide the link in the description below. Make sure to stop by there. But it's also equally important to understand how to make informative sketches and drawings so you or others can interpret information without a complete contextual understanding. You know, one thing drawing is good, you know your project is fully developed, is that when you don't need to be there to defend it, when your work and your drawings are enough for anyone off the street to come by and see your project and understand why you made those decisions how you use your project to solve those problems and how you can see it, you know, go in the future. So that's why drawings are such a huge help because if you, all you have is a model, it might help, but there's no storytelling behind it. There's no buildup to that, you know, to your architecture concept. But again, drawing takes practice and it takes iteration upon iteration to understand how to storytell with an image. So don't feel discouraged when you are drawing and you know it's not a masterpiece or when you're drawing, you maybe draw overdraw two information. You know, this takes time and it takes critical thought and decision making of what lines to show and what lines to not show. The second reason why hand drawings are still relevant today is because it is a time saver and an effective communicator. Sketches are immediate documentation of your work and they can save you time by simultaneously progressing your architecture concept, but also testing it. So while you're exploring some things, you're also testing other possibilities that you could choose. And though you might not have time to do that on a 3D model or model making, you can just make a quick sketch right next to it and be like, can this work? Can that work? I mean, that's why I like sketching so much. It's like knocking two birds with one stone. On the other hand, more developed drawings, fleshed out drawings, take more time it allows you to slow down and adjust your design to see is the thought that you had aligning with what you're seeing stay objective but more developed drawings kind of help provide necessary time for your brain to be like all right your thought process your work aligned if it's not aligned you might have to take a step back and consider why is it what's happening is there a discrepancy in my thought process that is not working with the architectural concept in front of me so although computer programs and architects can make the iterative process faster, hand drawings, again, are like rapid fire science experience testing your ideas. You could try different layouts or figure out construction details, and it just saves you time from drafting multiple times on the computer. Um, in my past experiences, you change one line, you change one wall, you move that column. It's just your whole three model just goes crazy and you don't want that from happening. So you can compare everything, you know, hand sketches, you could take 30 minutes compared to updating a digital model or testing out different ideas in a digital model could take hour or hours for that same action to happen. And then on top of that, sketching is just a huge benefit to your teammates, your clients, your peers, because in a case of a meeting or a misunderstanding and they need clarification, you can't just whip out a 3D model with your laptop and be like, ah, oh, this is here, you kind of didn't. No, not always the case that your client will, or peers will understand what you're working on which is why sketching is a great communicator. So in a way, when you're explaining things and you're sketching slowly over that kind of duration, whoever you're trying to clarify for, they'll slowly start to understand. And vice versa, if you don't understand what the other person is talking about, they can slow things down by sketching and describing things that they're trying to clarify for you and maybe that will pick up for you. So overall, just quick drawings are just really great communicators when there just needs to be clarification. And besides like the history of mankind has proven that drawing is a quick and effective way to communicate ideas. So why stop now? No. The third and the last reason that hand drawing is still relevant today is portfolio with personality. You know, as I mentioned like previously, you get to capture your design process and making hand drawings are a great supplement to your models and renderings. Uh, hand sketches, especially concept development, are not often seen in portfolios nowadays. So employers really enjoy understanding the process from your schematic design, your initial design concept to all the final production. This kind of gives, you know, not only employers, but your professors or peers a way to understand how your mind works, what ways are you figuring out solutions to design problems. And, you know, the famous adage, the journey is more important than the destination. You know, that's what I mean. Concept, sketches, 
really help give your final project its legitimacy saying that like yes i've tested out all these ways i could but i think this answer is the best answer for this scenario and with you testing multiple times it kind of gives you credibility to say like yes this works and again physical drawings and sketching um, is just a great way to showcase your personality because no two drawing styles are ever the same and sketching can almost act like the instantly recognizable signature and you know many may not realize but there's a lot of unconscious thought process that goes behind drawing the way that you use the media the pressure you use it on do you lift your pen a lot do you lift your brush a lot these little kind of nuances when it comes to drawing really elevates the drawing but also tells a story at the same time not just your overall image but just these little elements that adds up you know again architects are artists too so our drawings will contain underlying thoughts and atmosphere that we want to convey so drawings that you want to be a little more serious a little more i guess in a little more subtle you want to use darker skin colors grays blacks just different tones of grays too whereas if you want to be a little more lively a little more happy you might use hues of yellow some little oranges and things like that so your color choices play into that storytelling mostly so like when architecture designers present their concepts they unfold the narrative filled context ideas and attention become storytellers like i said in a sunday so hear me out Imagine a Sunday, the story becomes the ice cream, while the drawings are all the toppings you see. It complements the subject. Physical drawings, whether sketches or developed art pieces, will always have a time and place in architecture because they add to the overall architecture that you have created. As I mentioned, the reason why we're going to provide a link to this article is because Architects is actually hosting the one drawing challenge of 2021. So it makes this article really relevant for those who are interested. You can find more details about the competition on the article itself and through Architizer. And it's a really cool opportunity for you to explore what drawing means to you, explore how a drawing can tell a story and see how it fares against other people. And you already know how we feel about architecture competitions. They're a great way to supplement um, your curriculum possibly a great way to win a cool prize and it just helps you push your design thinking architecture knowledge and out of your comfort zone by experimenting competitions are really free for you to do whatever you like within the confines of rules or maybe not within the confines of the rules who knows anywho that's all i have for you today make sure to like comment subscribe to our channel for more content maybe you want to see other things that you're interested in We'll definitely read the comments and make sure we'll get to those. Bye.